guys. Welcome to the Film Independent Spirit Awards. I'm Melissa Villasenor. As you may have noticed, we are not in the big tent on the beach. Instead, we're in a place more familiar to independent film fans, a completely empty theater. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's not a completely empty theater. If you hear laughing, it's just the production crew. They're watching Caddyshack. <laughs> This was a tough year to get people to watch independent movies. Who spends all day reading COVID statistics and then is like, mm, I could really go for a long, slow film with an ambiguous ending right now. <laughs> Tonight, we celebrate the directors, writers, and actors who embody the spirit of independent film, all in hopes of one day getting to make a Marvel movie. <laughs> for the first time, the Spirit Awards has added categories for television. Because if there's one note award shows keep getting is, make the show longer. <laughs> and of course tonight, we'll be honoring the best movies you heard were really good. There's Minari, which has the funniest movie grandma not played by Tyler Perry. Sound of Metal is a film about a heavy metal drummer who starts losing his hearing on tour. Can you imagine a metal band where the drummer can't even hear what he's playing? it would sound like every metal band. <laughs> Sorry, I love that one so much. Sound of Metal is up for three awards tonight. Or, for any heavy metal drummers watching, Sound of Metal's up for three awards! <laughs> one Night in Miami will receive the Robert Altman Award, which honors films where people talk over one another. That's a smart joke about Altman's extensive use of overlapping dialogue. And if you didn't get it, why are you even watching this Art House Awards show, you poser? <laughs> One Night in Miami is also winning the award for best film that sounds like porn, but isn't. <laughs> Better luck next time, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. <laughs> Ma Rainey's Black Bottom made me feel seen because I am also an underappreciated diva who will stop this show right now if someone doesn't bring me a goddamn soda! I don't want it anymore! Get away! Go! <laughs> and I gotta say, Nomadland really changed the way I look at people who drive around alone in beat-up white vans. I used to think, oh, there goes a sex offender. But now I think, there goes a nice lady navigating grief and economic uncertainty. <laughs> I love independent movies because they can be wildly inventive and tend to stay away from the typical mainstream fare. Like The Assistant, it's a movie about a woman who works for an abusive Hollywood mogul. I mean, where do they come up with this stuff? <laughs> so imaginative. Promising Young Woman is an important movie about a woman who pretends to get drunk so she can catch men being jerks. I'm not sure she needed to do the whole pretend to be drunk part. She could have just made a joke on Twitter. <laughs> there are very few white men nominated tonight. In fact, two of our biggest awards, Best Male Lead and Best Director, have no white male nominees at all. In other words, if there was an after party, the dance floor would be popping. <laughs> That's how I dance, it's not good. Um, <laughs> it seems the only movies white men made this year were the ones they posted to their social media on January 6th. Oh. Tonight, we're showcasing films that expose racism, sexism, ageism, rape culture, abortion, the immigrant experience, ableism, financial insecurity, the prison industrial complex, and healthcare corruption. Now who's ready to have a good time? Yeah. 